I want to tell you that do you know that whenever there is something good to be done, there is a small part of you that tells you to do it. Sometimes that becomes a big part of you, depending on your closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and depending also on how you have allowed yourself to progress and look at matters over time. And when there is something bad to be done, a small part of you tells you to look into it, perhaps to do it. Sometimes a big part, depending on how you've trained yourself and how distant you are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sometimes when a good thing is there to be done, a little part of you tells you not to do it, to stay away from it, to abstain. And it fluctuates. All of this is opportunity from Allah. There is a war that is happening between the good force and the bad force within you. So there are angels that are trying to encourage you to do good. And there is a qareen or a shaitan that is trying to encourage you to do bad. Whenever there is good, shaitan tells you don't do it. Whenever there is bad, shaitan tells you do it. And the angels are exactly the opposite. So my brothers and sisters, what you need to ask yourself is in your life, who have you allowed to be victorious? Is it the angelic, the proper force, the good force? Or is it the devil, the demonic or the satanic force? If there is something evil, something evil that you find yourself constantly going towards, then you need to strengthen yourself. It's called your nafs, yourself, your soul. You need to strengthen it in a way that you become a person who, by the help of Allah, realizes that that's not going to get you anywhere. A person who's addicted to something. I want to give you a good example. Smoking. Smoking is a good example. The reason is, everyone admits, including the non-Muslims, that it's a bad habit. In fact, you're not allowed to sell a cigarette without declaring on it, declaration, it kills. Okay? If you don't even think about it, and if you think to yourself, it's not bad, it's okay, these people are just talking, I have another fatwa from another scholar somewhere else, who, who's probably smoking by the way, uh, who says that, nah, it's okay, it's makru, it's fine, it's fine, you know, it's not a big deal. Then... Are you ever going to eradicate that habit? The answer is no, because you haven't even thought of it. You have a bad habit and you don't even think you have a bad habit. You see? But if you thought about it, then what will happen? You need to control your nafs in order to be able to win that wrestling match or the battle between the two forces within you. And this is when you will be able to succeed. Otherwise, it's not coming. You know, the boxers. The boxers who are, subhanallah, in the ring, how much do they train? What do they want to do? They want to knock out their opponent. They have to train. They have to work hard. They have to control themselves. They are disciplined. They will work. That is when they will knock out their opponent in the ring. Trust me, shaitan is a bigger enemy than anyone could be in a boxing ring. And it requires or he requires much more of our power, dedication and training in order to be knocked out than someone who's just a boxer. So make an effort. We always say, what's the point of having huge muscles when you haven't even tackled shaitan? Allahu Akbar. Shaitan. Allah says, Inna kayda shaytani kana da'ifa. The plot of the devil is so weak, but you're becoming weaker than the devil. Just be a little bit strong, you overcome the devil. Big muscles, mashallah. Huge, big guys. Protein, day and night, mashallah. I hope it's not just injecting something, subhanallah. Otherwise your muscles might pop, subhanallah. But no matter how big you look, subhanallah, ask yourself, can I even tackle what Allah calls weak shaitan? I can't even tackle the devil. Do you remember in the past I said, if you think you're strong, if you think you're strong, you would only be a strong person if you were able to lift your blanket for Salatul Fajr. I'm sure you've heard that, right? If you can lift your blanket for Salatul Fajr, you are strong. 
But if you can lift 100 kilos, 200 kilos, that's nothing because the blanket, too heavy for you, right? Too heavy. So the strongest person is the one, comes Salatul Fajr, ugh, you put your blanket up and you push it aside. Similarly, a strong mu'min is he who's able or she who's able to fight bad habits. We are human beings. We will have a few habits that are not so good. We can have bad habits on condition that it's not something that we have become oblivious of. We're working on it. We're trying to eradicate it. So a brother will tell you, and even a sister who's smoking, she'll tell you, you know what? Sorry, I have to give that example because I've seen some sisters smoke. MashaAllah. Astaghfirullah. Okay. So she will tell you that, you know what? I used to smoke 20. Then I started smoking 15. And now, Alhamdulillah, I'm at 10. Wait, hang on. Say, Alhamdulillah, Astaghfirullah, I'm at 10. Use both, not just Alhamdulillah. Because if you say, Alhamdulillah, I'm at 10, what will happen is, you're happy that you're at 10 and you think you've achieved from 20, I cut it down to half. So shaitan makes you think, right, that's okay. You've already done it. You've achieved. No. Alhamdulillah that I've cut half and astaghfirullah, I'm not even supposed to be on these 10. You see? So alhamdulillah, astaghfirullah. And if you're really dedicated, alhamdulillah, astaghfirullah, inshallah, I'm at 10. That means, the inshallah means I'm going to quit that 10 as well. The, the issue here is dedication. Wallahi, if you're not dedicated and you're not focused, you will never achieve. A person who's delaying salah, for example, every time you, you haven't read your salah, you're lazy, uh, you go to work, you forget about salah, a week goes by, the only salah you've read is salat al-jumu'ah, and that too you arrived late and you left first, subhanallah. I can tell you something interesting about that type of a person. If that person feels within himself, I need to do something about this, it's the Rahmah of Allah. It's the Rahmah of Allah. But if that person does not feel within themselves that they need to do something about it, then it is definitely something very bad. You will lose. You are the only one who's going to lose. No one else. So when a person has not fulfilled their duty unto Allah, but they are trying their best to change that way and habit, it's a good thing. Alhamdulillah, don't lose focus, remain focused. Yesterday someone sent me, and I'm sorry to give you this example, but I will because this is what a lot of people might relate to. Someone sent me a little clip about the history of Phelps. You know who's Phelps? Who's Phelps? The swimmer. I think he broke so many world records. Do you agree? Do you know that when he started off, he was actually scared of water. He was scared of water. And do you know that after he did very well initially, he slipped into drugs and he almost lost himself. And one day, something clicked in him and he says, no, I want to go back and I want to give it my, I want to do one last race and I'm going to give it everything I have. That last race ended up in him becoming the world champion. Not just once, but I think he struck gold more than 28 times. Why am I telling you this? Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. What you've done, where you've been, what has been happening, it becomes irrelevant the moment you turn to Allah. It becomes irrelevant. Then what happens? Shaitan comes to you with something else. What does he say? He says to you, you changed your life, but you were too, too bad for Allah to have totally forgiven you. So now you start doubting the mercy of Allah. My brothers, my sisters, the biggest insult at that juncture while you are seeking forgiveness would be to doubt the mercy of Allah. I said it yesterday. I'm saying it again today. Allah says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ 
Say to my worshippers, O oh, my worshippers who have transgressed against themselves. Never ever lose hope in the mercy of Allah. He will forgive all your sins because He is most forgiving, most merciful. That's the verse. What does Allah say? Never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. So Shaytan knows that now that you want to turn towards Allah, He's going to come to you from a different door and tell you that you know what? You are a little bit too far out of the reach of the mercy of Allah. Then when you've engaged in tawbah, he makes you think, no, your tawbah is not accepted. Yours is not. That's shaitan. If you think your tawbah is not accepted, it's shaitan. Unless you were not sincere when you sought the forgiveness of Allah. Do you seek the forgiveness of Allah? And sometimes what happens, a person seeks the forgiveness of Allah with all the four conditions. What are the four conditions? You admit, you regret, you ask for forgiveness and you promise not to do it again. Four conditions. Beautiful. Easy to remember because the sequence is common logic. I admit I did wrong. I regret it. I'm not excited about it. I ask Allah, oh Allah, forgive me. And I say, oh Allah, I won't do it again. Right? For as long as those conditions were met at the time of seeking forgiveness and you were serious, the sin is wiped out. One more condition and that is for as, for as long as the sin was not committed against a fellow human being. Because you cannot go and steal $20,000 from someone and then say, Oh Allah, I admit, I regret, seek forgiveness, won't do it again. But anyway, this 20 is mine. <laughs> that is foolish because if it's against a fellow human being, you need to clear it with them. Go back and donate the 20 back to them. Say, look, I'm sorry, this is what happened and there it goes. You know? So you ask Allah's forgiveness. Yes, indeed. If you're genuine, He has forgiven you. Don't doubt it. Sometimes, because you're a human being, you might falter again. A person makes tawbah to Allah to say, I'll never miss a salah again. And they do not miss a salah. But then what happens is, sometimes, somewhere down the line, one salah gets clicked out of the timing. You feel immediate regret again. This is the second time it's happening. So what do you do? You make your qaba. You make your missed prayer immediately as soon as you remember. You make your qaba. And what do you do? You promise again, Oh Allah, forgive me. I Really, this was something very, very bad. I don't want to do it again. It's okay. Allah will forgive you a second time. Sometime about a month later, two months later, you missed another one. Again, you go back to Allah. Oh Allah, forgive me. I didn't really mean to do this, but it happened. So it's not you and yourself and your habit and your quality anymore. Now it's just a blunder, an error. It's a mistake. And if you fall back into a situation where you have gone back to missing your prayer wholesale, my brothers, my sisters, quickly come back to Allah and seek His forgiveness again. He will forgive you another time. Again. And a few years down the line, you fell into the same thing again. You know what? Quickly go back to Allah, seek His forgiveness again. He will forgive you a third time. So the question is, how many times will He forgive me? How many times? The answer is, Allah continues to forgive you for as long as you continue to sincerely repent to Him. If you were genuine each time you sought the forgiveness of Allah, He will forgive you unlimited. So much so that there is a hadith where the Prophet ﷺ reports to us what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala watches his worshippers seeking forgiveness and falling back into the same sin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ta says to his angels, you see my worshipper seeking forgiveness, falling back and seeking forgiveness again and falling back and seeking forgiveness again and falling back, not as a joke. But seriously seeking forgiveness again. What do you think that I should do to him? The angels would say, you are the most forgiving. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, My worshipper has realized and believes firmly that he has a Lord, he has a Rabb whom he is answerable to. 
who can either forgive him or punish him. And therefore he keeps seeking my forgiveness. I want you to bear witness, O my angels, that I have forgiven him completely.